This presentation is an introduction and overview of the GEM standard. The presentation's been broken down into five parts. Some answers to typical questions that we see about GEM. And what we have seen is that GEM really can be implemented really quite quickly and easily. We've there's our product out there, of course, and we've made it just, and you'll be shocked how fast you can get the GEM interface working. It really is fast and easy because we're using today's software technology. And the GEM standard is alive and well, and improvements are made periodically. And GEM usage is definitely increasing dramatically across the world. It's been used for many years by large companies like Intel, Samsung, TSMC, IBM, Micron. I mean, just huge companies are backing the GEM standard and using it 24-7, 365 days a year and have been for many years. And, and they have no intention of moving elsewhere. Uh, GEM is flexible. So you, you can implement it on the simplest of devices if you want to, or on the most complex equipment that are out there. So you've got you know $10,000 simple things implementing GEM, and you've got machines that are worth over $100 million that are implementing GEM. Uh, GEM can be retrofitted on existing equipment, but typically that does result in limited functionality and sometimes limited performance. The best way is to implement GEM by the integrator, sorry, by the software development team and by the equipment supplier who's making the equipment. They are the best and most qualified to make a good performing GEM interface. What's nice too about GEM is that it can be upgraded and in, uh, without breaking backwards com com compatibility. Uh, you can have an equipment and add more collection events and add more status variables and more remote commands, but it doesn't affect anybody unless they use the new functionality. So it makes it easy to implement GEM in phases and to add to GEM over time. So if somebody is first implementing GEM, I normally recommend that they keep it relatively simple and get it out there and then ask for feedback as they implement more functionality. And this concludes the final and fifth part of the GEM introduction. I hope that it's been educational for you. Thank you.